So since we have the chairs here and the tables here, please welcome with me Mihaela Popescu. Thank you very much for this film. And Agnès Godard and Marie-Louise Angara. So um, don't worry for us, we have some vodka on our table. Um, we're always in danger of over-intellectualizing over things, so we'll have a little drink um, while you watch. And of course, you're very welcome to grab a drink as well. Um, I think not all are too keen on having vodka, but we'll see how the discussion goes. <laughs> the big one is always the vodka, yeah. Um, To jump into to jump into the the, the, the discussion, um, Mihela, um, there are many things I would like to talk about. Um, not least um, the question about um, uh, the sense and the structure. But to start off, um, I think what's what's very striking about the film is that there is um, linked with the structure and the structures we discover in this film, um, the different kind of structures, there's also some uh, feeling of uh, great violence and of oppression um, that is one of the feelings that the film can um, allow us to um, dwell in. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the, um, the linking of um, the structures um, you're building up and the tension you're building up. Hi. Um, I, I, can I get a more uh, concrete example? Because I don't want to start a general uh, discussion. Uh. Um, well, I mean, there are, there are many, many moments, of course, that have um, this, this tension and this, uh, and this violence. And what I'm, what I'm referring to is that, obviously, there is um, a very violent scene that is a rape scene. But there's also a very great um, violence in the courtroom that is not an overt violence. So I'm, I'm thinking about how you constructed this to link the different elements of tension, oppression, and violence to the, to the structure of the film. Is that more concrete? Um, yeah. Um, I, uh, unfortunately, I do uh, have a term, but it's in French. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know Go the ahead. English. Uh, it's a mise en abîme. Uh, so this is why uh, I came up with uh, this uh, structure. Um, the whole idea started with, with the courtroom. So uh, that's where, uh, the, let's say, the first uh, inspiration uh, came. Uh, and um, I was quite struck. But by what I saw, I, I thought it was uh, very absurd and um, very, very mechanic. I, I really had no idea that, you know, justice looks like this. Well, once you go in there in a courtroom, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a feeling. So the idea started with a courtroom. Uh, and... Um, yeah, with the courtroom, and then I, I, I really started to think about a judge. Um, and okay, so the feeling you're, you're referring to, or the impression you're referring to, is more the mechanical side and less the tension or the oppression that um, was something that struck me. Uh, there is that as mm -hmm. well, uh, because even though you, you do not experience, uh, uh, you do not experience it in, um, in court, uh, you know it's there, it's outside. So this is why I wanted to to, to include it uh, outside the courtroom. Yeah, you're you're taking something out of the that you see in the courtroom and you let us feel it outside of the courtroom. Yes. Um, there's al uh, there's a second uh, element because we can talk about many um, surrealistic elements and the <coughs> symbolic nature of of things and interpreta uh, interpretations that are possible with this film. But there's something that was very important for me and I think that is a key to to 
view the film is actually the documentary or the mimicking of documentary um, uh, images um, in the end, the last, the last sequence that we, that we just saw. This, uh, for me, it's really a key to, um, to opening up the film because there's, there's so much um, meaning we can address um, or we can invest into the film. And there's, um, there's this little, um, maybe it's a breath of fresh air, but it's also something that is, um, that is actually helping us with, um, uh, with the tension that was built up in the film. Um, can you tell us something about this, uh, these last few images? Well, um, I, I cannot comment on the meaning. No, uh, of course not. <laughs> um, well, if, I don't know. Um, why I chose documentary in terms of styles? Um, I mean we n um, maybe um, other people don't know you're you're working right now on a feature documentary, and you've y your uh, last film was a short documentary that was just that just premiered in Leipzig. Yes. Um, so you're you're akin to uh, working with documentary methods. Um, um, yes, but. Again, there's the, there's a choice there. Uh, it's not because I'm doing next a documentary. Uh -huh. And um, um, well, the idea is <laughs> I I I, uh, I cannot talk about it. Uh, there's there's the quote from Francis Bacon that I really like. Uh, if you can talk about it, why paint it? So I feel the same way about film. I, if if I could have talked about it, <laughs> I would have, <laughs> but I couldn't. So I, I made this ending. I think that's the cue for um, asking those who didn't make the film um, to t uh, to talk about it. Um, uh, and yes. Um, uh, one of the first um, reactions you shared with me was that you saw bitterness um, in this uh, in this uh, film. If I translate it right, maybe you can um, uh, you can elaborate a little bit on how the effect that the film had on you, um, how you see it constructed. Um. Actually, I think uh, I must say that uh, tonight the third time. I see it because uh, I received it. I watched it once, and then since you asked us to write a little bit, I tried to write, and then I realized that I needed to see it more because uh, it was excessively difficult to write. I could not find a, an angle of attack to say what I felt. So I watched it another time, then I was able to send you this text, and then I saw it tonight on a bigger screen, which is of course different. And by the way, I would have a few questions to ask you about uh, how you work with your DOP and so on. So bitterness, I don't know if it's the, uh, <laughs> the word. Um, even though my English is quite poor, I would say that uh, it's the feeling that um, everything is played already after five minutes. I mean, it's everything is closed. The mechanical is so heavy that uh, it's the only thing alive. So uh, I could not breathe and I did not know exactly um, how to react and what to think about this uh, dark, very dark perspective on humanity. And then, uh, and then as a matter of fact, the images at the end are really uh, kind of reinforced this uh, feeling because I realized that the difference was not only a, a filming way or a style way. It's because people were filmed without knowing it. Apparently, it, it, it's stolen images, which is another question. First, images are totally mise en scène, and these ones are stolen. So. Suddenly, by seeing the film this uh, tonight again, um, I had the feeling that uh, I'm surprised you cannot say about uh, images uh, at the end, because it's true that uh, Francis Bacon said so about his painting, but he was able to talk about the painting once done. He knew he was able to say 
That's what I wanted to do or not. And he was able to say why he, he, he did it like that. And he said, for instance, uh, that he liked paintings that would uh, smell blood. And it's a little bit like that. And uh, I was just, um, I could not react really personally. I was just uh, somehow, and I think I'm still here, I'm in, in front of, a, of a, um, a film made by someone who's fascinated by uh, watching people. <laughs> And um, and that's uh, uh, and that's it. Uh, I mean, I cannot say more. Um, so that's why I wanted to ask you a question. How do you work on set? Uh, everything I is prepared in advance, or you do or you discover with your actors? I, I was curious to know how you work with your actors, for instance. Did you rehearse a lot? Did you, because they really uh, embodied their character. So I, I, I was, uh, did you, for instance, ask uh, your DOP, so the lady um, is more, uh, is lighted more than the other one in the, in the court? In, in she has more light on her face. So definitely, every time you see, she's the one in light. Um, did you ask him, for instance, to do this uh, shadowy thing at the end before they leave the apartment, you know? Did you ask him to do this dark uh, thing, dark light, dark atmosphere and everything? Just to know, um, um, to, yeah, to, to <laughs> because that's, the feeling I have. I've seen also um, that you edited the film, you directed, you wrote it. Um, so apparently you have a special relation with collaboration. So, I mean, uh, not all, you know, it could be done by other people. And I've seen also that there is a camera B, mm -hmm. so when, yeah, and, yeah. and also a painting uh, thing which is a VFX somehow. I was wondering when. I was w I, I'm was. i really curious to know that. A lot of questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, just to, just to um, share with you um, the information that um, the, <laughs> the <laughs> cheers, <laughs> um, that the DOP is um, Marius Panduro, um, who um, worked, for example, on police Police adjective. Yeah. Um, we've talked about um, this film um, before, Atherim, um as well. Um, and you worked with him also on your on your short film, um, The Walk, right? Yes. Okay. Um, you want to share a little bit about your working um, working with um, Marius? Well, yes, sure. Um, um, because we did that short film and we know each other for a long time, uh, we uh, we kind of have a special way of understanding each other. So, for example, I sent him the script, and uh, he, he immedi immediately responded, and if without me saying anything, he said, uh, "Look, I'm, I'm seeing this as a neo noir," which is was was exactly what what I what I was thinking of. Um, so, yeah, in terms of lighting uh, and shadows and so on. This was the idea. Uh, we, um, f uh, from a more technical point of view, because uh, you wanted to know about our relationship on set, um, oh, we, we, uh, I think the big decision for this film was choosing the lens, the lenses in the beginning. This was the idea. And we uh, did tests, and then uh, other tests, and other tests. <laughs> And then talking and talking, uh, we uh, we found out uh, this uh, 14 millimeter uh, lens, which distorted uh, the the reality. And you, we both knew, yes, this is it. <laughs> Did you have already the location, the apartment? Um, not 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 no, not uh, uh, all of them. Uh, so because of this decision, uh, we we did have an idea. Uh, about how the film uh, should look, long shots, and so on. Uh, 
Um, but we didn't want to be tied uh, to a storyboard, uh, and we uh, kept the freedom uh, on set. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes it was quite fine because um, you know you, you go on set with certain ex expectations, and you see they don't work. So uh, it happened. It happened. So we did have. Um, improvisation, let's say, um, according to, to what we felt in that place and scene and time. Um, as for the actors, we did rehearse um, like uh, almost two months. Um, but then again, some freedom was kept uh, on, on the set. Um, and now to the more difficult part <laughs> you, you addressed um, because you said like you get the feeling I, I enjoy watching people and you raised this question earlier with identification. Um, you said that this is uh, the big question, right, for this film? Uh, well, I said it could be, but I wasn't sure. It was a question because I was... Uh, Take the um, no, it's because I suddenly, yes, I, I thought, because I, I had somehow difficulty to mm. identify either one of the characters, so that's why, and you were talking about convention, and convention is, a convention is, you know, uh, somehow uh, has something to see with, uh, uh, with that. But uh, to, 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 <laughs> to answer that question, um, that question led eventually uh, are these characters to be loved or hated because you, you find the identification impossible um, and um, the thing is for me um, you know <laughs> I'm going to give a quote <laughs> again, but it's easier that way. Uh, Orwell said, um, you don't want so much to be loved as to be want as much as you want to be understood. Uh, and I, I agree with, with that. I, I, think, um, I think this is what I want from, from my characters. I don't want them uh, to be loved uh, uh, or hated. And, um, and I know this is a blasphemy in cinema because it relies so heavily on uh, on emotions, and uh, uh, the stronger the feelings it arouses, I think, the bigger the 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 the, the, uh, the success is or with the audience. Uh, and I think it's quite quite the opposite. I think uh, an understanding occurs when you tone down a bit the feelings and you you start. Uh, uh, you you go into an abstract thinking. Um, for example, you said about the police adjective um, of Cornelio Porumboyo, and you said that you had the identification uh, during the screening, uh, d d during the film. Uh, yeah, it's a bit wrong. It's it's clumsy way to to express things because I don't know. To write in English, okay. it's not only identification, but I I had the feeling to to see a film who was a uh, uh, taking a position, I would say, uh, to in front of uh, his country or justice or police. So it was a political uh, commitment, uh, and I had the feeling that to to understand something, and I was attracted to think about it and to take position myself, I would say. Because I've never been in Romania, so but I've been traveling around, and uh, uh, but that's what I, I wanted to say, not um, on the identif identification. And, uh, and I think sometimes, even uh, in a film, we can have a kind of uh, empathy mm -hmm. for uh, a criminal or something. I mean, I, I, um, <laughs> it's one of uh, the complexities I'd like to get um, Marie Louise also involved. Um, one of the complexities I'm sure of this film is that this taking a position as a spectator um, <laughs> um, 
is quite difficult because um, the film offers us many contradictory elements to um, take a position or find a position or find a way into it. Um, Marie Louise, maybe you can share because we, we we have we have here the offer to understand rather than to love. Um, maybe you can help us shed a li little bit of light <laughs> on understanding um, the relationship of um, these different elements we've been talking about. I had the same uh, viewing experience than Agnes. Uh, then I saw it for the first time and then the second time a little bit uh, when answering or trying to answer the questions we got in advance uh, of this event of, to uh, of tonight. Uh, and now to see it on the big screen is again a different viewing experience. But I must say, you know, this one was really very strong in the sense that actually, because, you know, I was very struck when you said, you know, I can't talk or I don't want to talk about it or explain it uh, because, you know, I did the film as a filmmaker. Uh, in, in, and it corresponds in a quite interesting way, you know, to the figures we we, uh, uh, in we, s we see in the film. They don't speak. And I was thinking about, you know, the, the during the film that there is only one person actually who is, at least as I understood it, uh, who is really speaking, it's the mother. The mother telling her, and now this is the interesting moment that she is talking about uh, images about her dream, and she explained, you know, in a very nice way, you know, what she what what she dreamt that that she saw, you know, her daughter walking in and out and walking to the into the next room, and then she didn't get out any more, and she could see her dancing, her arms cr uh, uh, crossed throughout her check. So, and in my view, this is the only person uh, who is talking. All the other persons, I mean, the guy and the woman, the, the main protagonist, they don't speak one word to each other, not one word. Uh, the g and I was always asking myself tonight, why, the, why is he not speaking? I mean, she is at least speaking <laughs> in the courtyard, but he is not even speaking there. So he actually, you know, why, he's, why is this guy, and also, you know, the, the quite interesting, the father is, al is also a person, a male person who doesn't speak. I mean, the, the only the only persons we can he we can hear in the film are female voices, you know, the she in the courtyard, her sister actually, and then the mother, and all and the uh, and the the male parts is really speechless, and um, uh, and I was really I, I thought you know what is the role of this speechlessness, why you know. I mean, of course, you know, in the courtyard, there's also not a, sp of course, no, not, not a, it's not a speech. There are laws, there are, there are sentences, ex and this is the mechanical moment, you know, of uh, showing, you know, that language is a system, you know, it's totally empty. It's just, you know, it doesn't tell anything, you know, it's just a, uh, a system, you know, uh, y yet to rule, you know, so. So yeah. there's something enigmatic about it? Is it, is it what you're trying to get at, the e enigma of um yeah of the role of the, the role of, lang of the language in this because you know you said you know you're not going to tell a story no, you're I not explaining uh, the figures yeah, yeah, you're yeah, not no, no, but uh, i mean actually i will, of course I will you know. answer. <laughs> <laughs> no please don't explain <laughs> <laughs> are you are you serious no no please please um that would be the last thing we would want to n to have an explanation um uh Maybe rather, maybe rather t uh, t uh, tell us a little bit about these, um, you know, very, um, let's say, opposed elements of, you know, there are some elements um, that um, Marie Louise just uh, raised that ask us questions and we wonder, and then there are um, also. Um, uh, some some very um, political uh, elements that are very clear. I mean, there's there's the whole trope of um, uh, corruption. Of course, we we have the these issues of the courtroom where things are laid before us. I mean, the 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 whole issue with the with the rape or also with the um, uh, scrap that was um, that was stolen. Um, so there are there are very very concrete elements that we can um, cling to, and then there are um, those um, enigmatic elements. And um, I'd rather have you talk about the construction of that than to answer why. <laughs> well, uh, I'm actually answering by repeating what, what 
you see in the film why uh, why is he not speaking because uh, she is speaking uh, for him she 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 asks for a uh, uh, whiskey she so they're they're very complementary you see these two main characters uh, throughout the film and there's obviously a relationship. I am not going to define that relationship for the audience, but you can obviously see that one speaks and one, uh, one uh, does not. One eats and the other doesn't. One sleeps and the other doesn't. So it's it's a complementary. But it's actually it's it also a static one. Yes, because it's not changing. You know, it's not interchange. It, it's it's all it's it goes. You know, it goes between the line goes between. The male and the female position. It's a binomial, let's say, as uh, you well said. It, there is a binary um, characteristic uh, for this film in structure, in um, in everything. <laughs> I was wondering, um, and yes, maybe um, uh, from from your perspective of a uh, um, director of photography, um, would you say that this film is is in present tense? Is it is it a present film? Is it um, is the experience um, we can we can make of it uh, one of the presents? Present, present, presence? Now? Yes. Yeah. In the in the sense of now. now? Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, uh, yes, I would say now. Though. There is uh, no uh, start and no ending, really. It's a state of things. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it's a suspended time because mm -hmm. they, they don't. Uh, we first met them, they are how they are. And when we leave them, they are how they are. I mean, it's uh, uh, so in that case, it's uh, yeah present time. The present we we are uh, watching them the by you know it's a sh we share this time in this moment it's today yeah and uh, but then I, I'm, I'm really curious to know when you used a second camera. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, yeah. Sorry, I uh, for the ending. Uh, for the documentary oh, okay. part, I see. it was a second camera. Oh, in that case, it was not a second camera on set, but it was no, an another. No, okay, yeah. shooting moment. Okay, so, okay, so my question is, uh, no. <laughs> Marie Louise, um, I have a um, maybe a bit complicated question, but um, I'm sure you can you can help us. There's a term I I read um, that you borrowed as well um, of the blind feeling. Um, and I was struck when reading this, um, uh, if I understand right, what blind feeling means is something like a feeling that is not from a subject mm -hmm. um, and that would mean that our perspective or perception, um, the one of a human and one of an animal could be the same. Yeah, Maybe you can yeah, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not the same, but it's uh, before, be before becoming a subject in a, a, a human subject, for instance, before becoming, but then you can also say before becoming an animal, an animal subject, there is something going on and in our out of this process of uh, out of the process of this blind feeling it's something you know the uh, in philosophy uh, whitehead has called the blind feeling as the moment you know w that something is going on already a perception is going on but without knowing it wi without you know being conscious about it and only after after this process or out of this process then you know you can say uh, that there has been something going on now you know when you said uh, we are affected by, or we are, we don't love the, the the characters, or we hate the characters. There is something going on before we hate them, before we love them, before we understand the characters. There is something, you know, which which, which relates us, you know, to the film, for instance. And only, you know, after after when we talk about it, and after, or we if we have to, you know, to position ourselves in front of the screen, then we have, you know, to see if do we do we love them, do we like them, do we hate them, what do we don't like. So it, this is something, you know, which al always comes a little bit later, and this 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 blind feeling is is, is something, you know, which which actually pu uh, uh, opens up, you know, the position where we we can do something or react in a, in a, in a specific way. 
So the blind feeling is is not a feeling, you know. It's not <laughs> something, you know, we can say, you know, we hate or we love. You know, it has nothing to do with this. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a total, a subjective, uh, process of perception. Is that is that something? Um, because the sense I'm getting from, per, uh, for example, the the aesthetic choices of the camera lens she was talking about, um, there's there's something we're really in the moment, we're really following them, but it's not a it's not exactly a human perspective either. It's it's something it's something else. Yeah, but you know we don't in the if if but then we don't know you know that we are following it. You know, it's it's something we just you know do it without knowing that we are doing it or that we are following it. Mm -hmm. That would be the, uh, the like more a precise, or yeah, the, the more precise way to put it. You know. Okay. May I say something? I think the the performance of the actors also is uh, very important to uh, build this uh, uh, um, atmosphere. I don't know storytelling atmosphere mm. you were looking for. How, how did you work with them? Because you said you've been rehearsing two months. What did you What did you talk about? What did you tell them? To What did you tell to the uh, uh, the, the What did you say mm. about the uh, these uh, characters in in the film? Did you say something or did you just uh, or is it Dance a secret <laughs> choreography? I don't know. No, I, I'm really. It's. Uh um, I relied much on the actions, um, and again, the actions are what they are. Um, and for example, for for the male part, uh, you don't uh, in this. Um, he doesn't speak. Uh, you eat. You you sleep. You feel the sexual desire, so they are in the moment. Uh, and for her, it was more difficult, let's say, but she was still in the moment reacting to him. As I said, they're complementary. Uh, she is speaking, she is thinking, she's taking care and feeds him. Um, so, yeah, again, relying on her actions in the film, I. Um, I try to convey the complementary uh, side of her. That's interesting because you're <laughs> you're talking about the um, this being in the moment, and you talked about improvisation before, um, and at the same time, there's there uh, when we see it, we see also actions that are um, that seem like stereotypes or mm -hmm. um, very or archetypes, if you want, of. Um, uh, <coughs> I mean, they're not they're not all in one vein, but at least we have images of the man um, taking the food as if he was a dog. You know, mm. he's waiting for the microwave as I if I eat like <laughs> that. So <laughs> you eat like that, yeah. waiting for the microwave to <laughs> really be finished. Uh, the the whole process is is based on <laughs> reality. <laughs> um, it does yeah. say, I think, in the trailer, it says based on true events. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, for example, the <laughs> <laughs> this is one one case, but uh, also the cases in the film are real. Um, again, there's the documentary part, so there is a mix of uh, true events. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I want I want to just wanted to say you know, but that that, that many images are strong because you know they are so familiar. You know, in a in a. In, in many ways, for instance, the, the starting uh, moment, you know, when she takes, uh, when she, when when he is the dog, or she, you know, goes with him uh, out uh, out to the park, uh, like a, he him like a dog. I mean, this is a uh, this is a very um, you know, in art and film, actually, uh, we have seen many of these images. You know, the the, the uh, for instance. Uh, uh, Peter Weibel and uh, Valley Export, you know, Valley Export uh, having, you know, uh, leading uh, Peter Weibel, uh, or many other examples in art. That's why I said, you know, in my little uh, uh, interview thing, you know, that, that there are so many, or colleague, uh, colleague uh, playing, you know, that as a do as a do acting as if uh, uh, a dog. So these images are in a way present, you know, when you see these things, or you know, the, the, these sexual scenes are so. Uh, there are so there are hundreds, millions, you know, of these scenes, you know. So actually, this is something a triggering moment 
where you can, of course, you know, s tell the people to act, but of course, you know, they, do they in a way, they repeat. Yes. <laughs> but and I, I mean, I mean, the thing was, you know, when when I when the, the, the starting scene, you know, with this dog, the the, the the male figure as a dog, I thought, you know, what 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 does it what would do you want to tell us? Well, well we don't uh, want to know. <laughs> yeah, I, but you know, actually, no. this was this was one thing, you know, uh, starting. But then, of course, you know, at the end, he just disappears because you know we don't know, you know, is he still alive or not? Well. Since you mentioned the dog part, yeah. we as, I, uh, as I told you before uh, in that discussion, yeah. you see a leash and yeah. you could think of a dog and uh, it's, it's an absolute uh, normal uh, analogy and you think of an animal. Uh, so uh, it is something we're quite familiar with and this analogy has, uh, has started way way long before you know uh, yeah. the persons you mentioned uh, it started from aristotle and even long before that so it yes uh, yes yeah. <laughs> just, as there a is quick that. just as a quick side note if some of you are wondering what we're referring to um there there was a little um, email exchange before that you can um after after leaving um read on our blog to just um, elicit some of the motives um, uh, that we that we want to talk about tonight. Um, you, you've been talking about uh, the stereotypes. Um, um, maybe this is also something linked to conventions. And I, um, for me, what what's um, what's impressive about this work um, is that um, uh, it doesn't so much transgress um, the conventions, but it rather lays them bare. It opens them up to um, uh, to our eye. Yeah. It's not so much a question <laughs> as a, a comment. Uh, well, yeah, you you are limited in every work you do. So you 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 basically work with what you have, and you have conventions in in any kind of work or environment so I played with what I had <laughs> of course no for, for me it's also it's also something quite political to uh, to do um, to um, open up the conventions for us to see them even um, I think um, I, I think that's one one of the one of the elements that we can we can jump into um, and that's one of the things that we can have empathy or some other kind of relationship with it, be it um, rather intellectual or sensual, um, since since that's one of the one of the things that the film offers to us. Um, and yes, um, I was wondering maybe you could tell us a little bit about about your own work, um, because um, what I what I find striking is that um, when. Of course, um, you've been dealing in many of your films also with questions of violence and questions of oppression, and also, of course, conventions is, I mean, that's one of the things that's always always there. But when you, um, when you work with that, um, there's always a feeling that um, conventions is something that um, uh, you don't deal, deal with it head on, but rather seamlessly, there's something um, uh, elegant and working with conventions. Maybe you can um, tell us a little bit how much conventions and transgressing conventions plays a role for you in your work. But as uh, Mihaela was saying, uh, sometimes uh, now, most of the time, we just have to do with what we have. Maybe sometimes at the beginning we, in secret, we have a, a goal. We would like to have this, to reach that, to create this or that. But then finally, I think it's much uh, better, more organic to, to find with what we have. So construction happens while we are uh, stepping forward. Convention, um, Sometimes, uh, sometimes they are really nice to play with, and sometimes it's uh, very fun to go against. <laughs> uh, it depends of the film. It depends of uh, 
the only thing I would say is uh, uh, for me the best guide when I'm looking uh, into the camera um, searching for an image or a shot I, I have only one question do I believe in that in what I see to for, for the film for, for what we are looking for for this moment f in the film for the sequence do I believe in it so this is for me the expression expression maybe of my faith in cinema in cinematography to say something to express something I really do believe that if we use a lens a, as you use or another kind of lens, it's gonna bring a sense, it's gonna say something, it's going to participate to the storytelling, definitely. So, in a way, that's what I, I think, when you are filming, when you are making a film, you are taking position, you must assume that. So you can't ignore the, 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 uh, what you are saying. You can't ignore that. I, this is your your engagement, your responsibility. I mean, you know, uh, uh, cinema, and images, film, you know, can be used in many uh, directions. So you you there is an ethic somehow. No, I think that's what I would say. So after that, I don't know. Maybe you were referring to convention, which is more like. Um, Different cinematic uh, convention. Everything is open. It's a uh, um, the most important is to is to find uh, one thing for the film. Of course, also you have uh, you have uh, models, uh, but uh, not to copy, just to just to feel the force, just to see that uh, when you are in front of something you, you find fantastic, maybe a bacon painting, because as a matter of fact, I'm an excessively great admirator of bacon. Uh, you, you feel the powerful of this uh, painting. You feel like you would like to grow up, to be able to say so much thing. And, uh, and um, that's why models are good to have, but not to copy. Also, they are saying that they found their their own language, their own thing. So that's why I think it's not a question of uh, aesthetic, it's a question of uh, is it right for the film or not? But still including that you are conscious or you 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 must know that the film will say something, will take position. You can't ignore it. Otherwise, if you ignore it, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's uh, uh, totally foolish, no? It's like a knife, <laughs> no? Like a I knife? I think it's, it's a responsibility in, in life. Ah, okay. I mean it's a responsibility. You can't uh, escape. You're responsible, no? Marie Louise, do you um, um, do you see the ethos, ethos of um, uh, Yatro? Yeah, I was um, while listening to Agnes. I was thinking of uh, what uh, that there was one moment I heard for the first time watching the film tonight, and this was actually all the noise and sound going coming from outside. For instance, when they were sitting in the kitchen, you could hear, you know, the cars. You could hear the traffic, and also in the courtyard, you could hear some many, many other noises, which are well not in the room, but some somewhere else. And uh, actually, I thought this is quite uh, interesting because you know these noises and sounds and birds. You could hear many, many, many moments. You know, many different sounds were actually sort of crossing through these to these static structures, you know, in the court or in the kitchen or where wheresoever. So I thought this is quite an interesting moment. I ha didn't hear, you know, when I watched, uh, when I saw the film for the first and, and for the second time, you know, in, the in the such a st strong way. So I thought, you know, this is something which, of course, you know, it's... It, it, it's it what cinema offers you as, yeah. uh, as yeah. a landscape, so of course. Yeah, so and what would the ethos there's be? Actually, there's a question. Oh, there's the question here. <laughs> um, the microphone no, is coming is your way. <laughs> um, just wait a second because um, other people might not hear you. Thank you. Okay. Is it 
Now you hear me. Um, I just have to ask a very short question first. Did I read correctly or understand correctly that this was the world premiere? It's the first time the film is showing? Yes. Um, exactly. That's... Um, I'm, I think all of us are here and happy to talk about films and, and take them apart and everything, but to be honest, I'm a little bit shocked um, to, I don't know, to take it apart the first time it's being shown, because, I don't know, it, it just, not, not at all, like, to talk about it tonight, but within seconds. Um, for me, as a viewer, I'm not that quick. Um, I need some time to, to, to digest. And I heard that, I don't know, I saw the, the, the main actress is also here. And I don't know, it's, I'm just, I was a little bit overwhelmed, actually, by the discussion just going in and just wanted to make a compliment for the film. I was very impressed. I liked it a lot and um, just had to say this right now. I don't know. Um. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Berlin Critics Week. There's, there's another, there was another comment here. Um, the microphone is coming. I, I actually I was all the time in, in I, I somehow wanted to say the same and I also s to to the things you said uh, now right now about the self consciousness the film shows totally consciousness about the the things uh, the about the light about everything what what she's dealing with the cutting is so sensitive I mean it's such a good work you know that just depart from all this uh, you have to know and so on I mean maybe you address it to I don't know to all filmmakers, but it sounded a bit, yeah. Okay, thank you for the film. Yes, another one away. Thank you. Uh, maybe, uh, was it a critique? I mean, the question is, was it a critique of this film, what you just said about the taking a position? No, no, it was, a <laughs> it was not, uh, it was uh, just... Uh, was the actually the answer to yeah, the Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was... Uh, yeah, that's w uh, how I understood Answer. it as a general as a general um, wish for what filmmaking should mm -hmm. be like. Yeah. yeah. There's a couple of more um, comments or questions. Hi, I have a question for Agnes. Like when you were saying, you look through the camera and you you try to see if you believe in the image. Could you elaborate a bit more on that? Like how you decide whether you believe it or if it's right for the film. Like. I did not uh, understand. Um, you were saying when you when you look through the camera when you work, you you try to, as far as I understood, you try to figure out like if you believe the image is right for the film. And could you elaborate a bit more on that? Like, can you talk a bit more about that? Like, how you decide whether you believe the image or not? Oh, it, it's just a. Uh, just a resume, just a, uh, to describe uh, what it means, the choice of a film stock, of lenses, of a distance you're going to film, of uh, you're going to be static, you're going to move. It's just a way to say that there is a, a, a language with the camera, and I do believe in this language. Not and not only a classical one, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but uh, I do believe that uh, uh, these choices are um, different way of working with a camera as a, as a sense and uh, is uh, an element of mise en scène in the sense that uh, it's uh, a participation to the uh, storytelling. That's why uh, I was it both. I mean, it both sounds religious and scientific. What you're what you're referring to, you know, the the belief in the image and the faith you were referring to, um, it can both be interpreted as something magical happening or something where you know your your view um, finds out something as as a truth. Um, yeah, maybe it's religious, maybe it's mystic, maybe it's uh, hysteric, maybe, I don't know. It's, uh, or scientific. But it's no. also, yes, maybe it's all together, I don't know. Um, but it's, uh, um, I like to do that. 
Um, okay. And, uh, sorry. And sorry. I really think uh, sometimes um, I like to go and uh, follow and see uh, during the editing uh, film I've been working on to compare sensation I had on the set and what it is in the editing room, what it says. Sometimes feelings are the same, sometimes totally different, one way or the other, you know. And uh, so it means that definitely uh, an image has a sense, but also has another sense because there is one before and one after, so it makes uh, sense. So it's uh, there is an infinite uh, number of uh, possibilities. Yeah. There was another comment or question here in the first row. Yeah, I have to admit that I'm a little bit lost. Uh, because when I while I was seeing the film, I was it was clear to me, really clear to me, not even an interpretation, but just clear to me, that these three characters actually are not characters, but just uh, concept Freudian uh, topics: id, uh, super ego, and ego. And uh, but you are talking uh, about them as if they were real characters. So I, I was wondering if, if what is your point of view on, on, on this? Um, this is a surrealist film, uh, and for me, surrealism is realism, just seen better. In this case, me, <laughs> because I did, uh, I had this idea. So for me, they are they are very concrete. Uh, okay, well, it's fair in, enough. It's it's interesting because um, I'm in the in the discussions we had um, before the screening with um, uh, while selecting it, we had exactly the same discussion and um, uh, there was this um, idea of they're not real um, and um, uh, it's it's one of the possibilities I think the film offers is to is to see um, is to see for example the two main characters as being one. Um, would be one interpretation, but the film um, doesn't allow you to stay with one interpretation because it's always complicated. I mean, um, the informations we receive and the impressions we receive, they don't allow us to stay in one um, interpretation, um, but they, they actually complicate it through, throughout the film. So even if um, you can have one of the interpretations, I think the film um, doesn't really allow you to stay with that. On my part, I was saying character because my English is very poor. <laughs> I don't have any other way, but it's... Uh, um, I don't know, in fact. <laughs> they are not uh, so real for me. They're not surreal or real? No, not so real. Are they real to you? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to understand. No, <laughs> they're not so real. Sorry. <laughs> Are there other comments um, or questions? Of course. Um. Sorry, just a quick half technical question. If I'm uh, so you're right, you use a steady cam. Yes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Um, again, for the same reason, I chose that lens. We tested, and it uh, it felt right. Uh, getting back to to Agnes's point, um, you you do you do know um, when you take decisions. Other questions or comments? I would have one last for um, Marie-Louise um, because we just um, briefly talked about the ethos and um, one of the things I was wondering because you raised the question of um, uh, of the female voices and the um, missing uh, men's voices um, would you say that this film is a feminist film? 
No, I would. <laughs> no, I wouldn't put it in this category because you no know, label. No label. No. No. I, I would say you know this is. It's maybe you know after the discussion we we had and uh, after you know also also the the input from the audience you know maybe it's not that easy you know to say you know the female voices were heard but the male voices were missing maybe it's all it's something uh, which is not you know not referring to any reality or any political reality so uh, you know I'm 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 asking you know this is more a question you know than than an answer because there's the representation and there's the non-representation yes yeah yeah so if you know if these these characters are not real then also you know, one has to ask you know is the female voice a female voice and the male speechless a male speechless i don't know yet you know so is this something you want to um help us or uh, help us with or do you want to leave us in the enigma um for some people it's clear <laughs> and for some it, it it's definitely not um i would prefer to leave it like this for me it's clear <laughs> 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 thank you very much <laughs>